If you had to name three things that you must remember in order to be an effective Christian, what would they be? Hmm. In this episode, I want to share with you from Paul's teaching as he gives the church at Philippi and us today three fundamentals of our faith. You're listening to Bishop Littman Live. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Welcome back to another episode of Bishop Littman Live. If you're visiting with us for the first time, I'm excited to have you here and I'd love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. By all means, I invite all of you to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help us be found by others who could benefit from these teachings. Well, if you had to come up with three fundamentals of our faith as believers that would kind of hold you until you leave this earth, what would they be? Well, fortunately for us, in this chapter, uh, the third chapter of Philippians, Paul gives us three solid fundamentals that will hold us together in our faith. Now, let's just remember that the book of Philippians is a letter of love, it's a letter of peace, it's a letter of joy. Paul is in jail, but he's loving on the church, and the church at Philippi is also loving on him. Remember, this church was founded from the story of Acts chapter 16, where Paul and Silas go into Macedonia, and they are locked up in jail for preaching the gospel. It was out of that very experience that Paul's inmate hood... <laughs> began to formulate and they began to treat him like a prisoner, locking him up under lock and key and under surveillance of a Roman soldier eight hours per day, three times a day. They would swap out being chained arm in arm to Paul. Paul wanted to go to Rome and preach in the major Colosseum. However, God had other plans for his life. You see, Paul learned how to work those chains and you and I must learn how to work our chains and preach wherever we are. You don't have to have a collar, a chain, a certificate, a license, an ordination or a consecration ceremony to share the gospel with others. Well, in this particular episode, as we move now into Philippians chapter number three, we're going to see Paul use the word finally as he opens up this passage in the King James Version. Now, this finally indicates that he is finally at the main core of his message. And we're going to see in Philippians chapter 3 some of the main emphasis that Paul is going to leave on the hearts and the minds of the church at Philippi. Let's begin reading now verse number 1 from the Living Bible Translation. And it reads like this, Whatever happens, dear friends, be glad in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you this, and it is good for you to hear it again and again. Now listen to verse number two. Watch out for those wicked men, dangerous dogs, I call them, who say you must be circumcised to be saved. Now, Paul is preaching to new believers, new converts, many of whom have come out of Judaism, which was a legalistic society that held that you had to fulfill a certain amount of laws in order to be in right standing with God. And even then, they still relied upon a priest as an intercessor to go in between you and God. Paul is now preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that is that Christ and Christ alone brings salvation and brings us into right standing with God the Father. And so Paul is now talking to the church at Philippi to remind them that the very essence of their salvation has nothing in the world to do with following what would amount to over 400 laws between Genesis and the book of Deuteronomy, which was considered the law of Moses and the law, the Levitical code came out of those first five books of the Bible. But Paul reassures them that they must hold on to the teachings of Jesus Christ, which he taught them that they are saved by faith through grace plus nothing else. You see the Judaizers and the traditional minded 
folks were trying to tell them they were not truly a Christian. They were not truly a follower of the way. They were not truly born again. They were not truly in right standing with God, except they followed the religious tradition of circumcision. And so Paul now teaches them in these first few verses that you must cling to the fundamentals of your faith. Here's number one. Paul's assertion is Roman numeral one. Now, in verse number one, we see that Paul tells them that the first fundamental that you must cling to of our faith in order to be a strong Christian, number one, is to rejoice forever. He says, whatever happens, dear friends, be glad in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you this. In other words, Paul was saying rejoice and keep on rejoicing that despite what happens, despite the challenges, despite the difficulties of the times, despite illness and sickness and disease and epidemic and pandemic and episodes of life that occur, live your life with the joy of the Lord and do it until the last day that you're on this earth. And he says, I'm telling you this again, and I'll never get tired of telling you rejoice in the Lord. In other words, Paul is trying to tell them, find joy in life and find it based upon your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't allow anything or anyone to come along and steal your joy. In reality, no one can steal your joy, but you can hand it over to them. Paul is telling them, find joy in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And he says to them, it is good for you to hear it again and again. You see, they would need to be reminded after Paul left the scene of what it meant and how to find joy in Jesus. Well, how do you find joy in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Simply by knowing that you have salvation through him, knowing that he is on your side, knowing that he is your intercessor who stands in between you and God the Father, knowing that if you are born again, all of your sins are cleansed and washed away, and there is nothing in between you and God but grace. And so Paul says to us, find joy in life, in your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the first principle that Paul teaches us concerning foundations and fundamentals of our faith is to rejoice forever. Let's look at the next principle that Paul gives us concerning fundamentals of our faith. Verse two, Paul gets much more stern and a lot more serious here and notice his language. He says, watch out for those wicked men, dangerous dogs. I call them who say you must be circumcised to be saved. Not only does Paul tell us in his assertion to rejoice forever, but secondly, Paul teaches us the second principle is reject falsehood, reject falsehood. You see, as I mentioned earlier, there were those who were trying to do all they could to denounce that grace and grace alone and forgiveness by the Lord Jesus Christ's belief in his death, burial, resurrection, and ultimate return was enough. They, they, they try to denounce the reality that confessing our sins and repenting of our sins and just believing and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and inviting his Holy Spirit in to dwell in us, live in us, to move in us, to change us was what was required for salvation. They still held to Jewish code and Jewish law. They failed to understand that the Jewish code and Jewish law was about Jesus. It was a picture of Jesus and catch this, it was created by Jesus. You see, the law was only our tutor, our schoolmaster that would lead us to the grace that we would experience ultimately in a living relationship with a living Lord. And so Paul says to them, these men who are going about preaching false and erroneous doctrine, knowing that I am away in prison and therefore the church is vulnerable to attack must be avoided. And notice the strong language that Paul uses. He says they are wicked men. They are dangerous dogs, he says, 
who have tried to convince you that circumcision of your flesh is necessary in order to obtain salvation. Well, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, a circumcision is necessary, but it is not the cutting of our flesh. It is the commitment of our spirit to the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not the cutting of our flesh, but it is indeed the commitment of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's where we need to understand something that is happening right now. You see, at the time of this taping, and you may watch this five years, two years, three years, 10 years from now, but at the time of that I'm taping this particular broadcast, we're living in a pandemic situation where pastors are not able to be in their pulpit, they're not able to connect with their congregation personally, and they're not able to congregate and bring large masses of people into their sanctuaries. And what is happening even now is that there is a myriad of people who are popping up all of a sudden and making themselves ministers and presenting themselves as ordained preachers and all of this and starting churches in the living room with no grounding in theology, no foundation in the scriptures. There are so many people even right now, even as I'm on this live, that are posting videos that have no real solid understanding of Bible history, of homiletics, of hermeneutics, and the foundational doctrines and theology of the church. Consequently, there was a lot of false information that is happening right this very minute, that people are just bringing things from the top of their head and no research, no study, no looking at original language, no real concern or consideration for the essence of of the truth of what the scripture is trying to portray. But instead, off the top of their head, they are just coming up with things to appease people, to tickle the ears and to get likes and subscribes and viewers. And even at this point in time, trying to eradicate the foundation of established churches and pulling people in, trying to get donations and tithes and offerings for their personal gain and agenda. This is no different than it was in the days of Paul because doctrine is being eradicated for dogma. Doctrine is being eradicated for what somebody thinks off the top of their head without a solid foundation of biblical education, a theological foundation. And as Paul said to them, then I say to you now, watch out for those wicked men and wicked women, dangerous dogs, because there is so much changing and shifting away from sound biblical teaching and sound biblical theology to pop culture and whatever comes to my mind, I turn it into a sermon and all of a sudden I turn my camera on and I minister pastor, bishop overnight, so-and-so. And so Paul warned the church then it is now time for the real true men and women of God who have some experience and knowledge of the word with biblical exegesis to be able to say the same warning that Paul says to us in chapter three, verse two of Philippians, watch out for those wicked men and women, dangerous dogs. And so Paul says that their agenda is to go against what I've taught you, to go against what the scripture says, to go against the ultimate and pure word of God. And that in his case was that circumcision did not come by the cutting of the foreskin of a man, but rather circumcision of the heart, the cutting or the committing of our faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul tells us that we must hold on to the fundamentals of our faith. Number one, rejoice forever. That is to find joy in Jesus Christ, your relationship with him, get our minds off of things and possessions and people and uh, piety and all of that and find our joy in Jesus Christ. Number two, reject falsehood or false doctrine. And here's number three, finally, Paul 
It admonishes the church then and admonishes us vicariously now as modern day believers to remember the facts. Remember the facts. Now, in verse number three of Philippians chapter three, Paul says in the Living Bible translation, or it isn't the cutting of our bodies, here it is, that makes us children of God. It is worshiping him with our spirits, not the cutting of our body, but worshiping him with our spirits. These are the facts that Paul tells the church to remember. That is the only true circumcision. We Christians glory in what Christ Jesus has done for us and realize that we are helpless to save ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the foundation. That is the fundamentals of our faith. If you can only remember three things in your lifetime and in your journey and in your growth as a Christian, remember what Paul teaches us in these first three verses of Philippians chapter number three. To rejoice forever. Find our joy in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. To reject falsehood. If it's not biblically sound, if it's not biblically based, if it is not line upon line, precept upon precept, verse by verse, expository, if it is not sound doctrine, reject it as falsehood. You don't need anybody trying to pep you up and tell you what you want to hear and use their emotions to try and gain your fellowship. What you need is a sound, solid word that challenges you to read the Bible verse by verse for yourself. Paul says, finally, remember the facts. And the facts are that it is not any other means through which we obtain salvation than through our worship of the Lord Jesus Christ, our connection to him, our being brought into the body of Christ by and through the blood of Jesus on Calvary's cross. It's that simple. Rejoice forever. It's that simple. Reject falsehood. It's that simple. Remember the facts. We are helpless to save ourselves. Well, listen, I hope that you enjoyed today's teaching. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, don't give it a thumbs down. I'd like to know why you didn't like it. Let me know in the comments. Hey, I'm so excited to share these teachings with you. I'm here Monday through Friday with a video every day while we're in the book of Philippians, Monday through Friday. If you're interested in growing even more, and if you'd like more Bible teaching that is solid, that is Bible-based, line upon line, precept upon precept, verse by verse, why not join my e-class? Send an email request to clearstudies at gmail.com. And when you send that request, I will put you on the e-class mailing list and you'll receive PDF study guides for the teachings that I produce in these series. You'll love it. It has discussion questions at the end and you're able to interact with me and with others with your questions or comments. So I look forward to receiving your email at clearstudies at gmail.com. Also, if you have a prayer request, I'd love to pray with you and for you. You can send me a prayer request in strictness of confidence to prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. Well, I'd like to close this broadcast with prayer, and I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you so much for my friend who is viewing this video or listening to this podcast, wherever they may be in life right now, Lord, in these uncertain times, in these difficult times, in these dark times where people are looking for answers and looking in all of the wrong places. Father, thank you for your word spoken by the Apostle Paul that reminds us that there is only one true way and only one true God. We thank you for Jesus Christ, for his sacrifice on Calvary's cross, that we might be free, that we might know you as our personal God, our personal Father. Now, Lord, I pray your blessings upon those who are watching and listening to me right now. Whatever their needs are, meet it according to your will. And Father, we give you honor. We give you praise. Help us, Father, to stay focused on truth, on accuracy, to never get caught up with tickling ear messages that are not designed to lead us to you, but that are only designed to lead us to the person who is speaking. 
Help us to remember these principles and practice these principles the rest of our days. God, we want to please you. We want to serve you. We want to honor you. We want to give you our all. And God, we thank you today because you're amazing, you're wonderful, and you're good. In Jesus' name, amen. I look forward to hearing from you, and I look forward to sharing with you in the next episode. Until next time, take good care of yourself because you're the only self that you have. Take care.